I have somehow become known as the number one Chrome Hearts hater on YouTube. Why? Because I made two critical videos on them, and everyone else in the fashion and streetwear scene is too scared to say a single bad thing about them. Like, I don't know if the Starks are actually Cosa Nostra or something, like they've got enforcers and I should fear for my life, but that's how hard people defend them. I'll link my previous videos down below, make sure you check those out, but once you've seen them, it may surprise you to learn that I actually got my butt out into the world and went to a real Chrome Hearts store. It was the weirdest shopping experience I have ever had. And now, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Yo, 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 before we get too much further, subscribe to the channel. I make tons of luxury and streetwear content. And also, if you're looking for deals on luxury and streetwear, check the description. I've got some of the best sites with all authentic stuff. Check it out. I was recently in Miami, and if you're not familiar with the city, one thing you should know is that it's probably one of the fastest growing fashion capitals in the world why every brand is in a, a rat race situation to build themselves up in a city that's about to be underwater is anyone's guess, but I suppose that's uh, none of my business. But of course, once I knew I was visiting Miami, I decided to figure out which places to hit up while I was there. And by places, I mean like reverse ATMs, you know, spots where they take the money from you. And then a thought popped into my head. There's actually a Chrome Heart store in Miami. And there aren't that many Chrome Hearts stores in the world even, so I figured this would be my chance to figure out what all the hubbub is about. I'm not really a fan of Chrome Hearts, but maybe that's just the stuff you see on, on the interwebs. You know, maybe their shops are actually lit. You see, even though I've been quite critical of Chrome Hearts, I've still kept myself aware of what's going on with the brand and what people are saying about them. I mean, it's pretty hard to ignore the giant chubs that fashion bros get when they see a cemetery cross. I check what's out there on resale sites and consignment stores and all that, and that's really out of necessity. Chrome Hearts don't let other boutiques like Saks Fifth Avenue or whatever stock their stuff, and they essentially sell nothing online, even on their own website, so if you wanna buy Chrome stuff, you're either schlepping to their store or taking your chances at resale. And here's my issue with the resale stuff. First, it seems like all anyone buys from Chrome Hearts is boring ass screen printed hoodies and t-shirts. You want something interesting like some of the jeans with leather patches or a leather bag or even some nice sunglasses? Hell no, your choices are a white t-shirt that says fuck you on it or a hoodie with a big screen printed iron cross. And if you buy the latter, everybody's probably just gonna think you're wearing an independent hoodie anyway, so maybe just like save your 600 bucks on that one, homie. The other issue I have is legit checking. Chrome Heart stuff is really, really simple. As long as a faker can replicate their tags pretty well, they could be rolling in it, printing rep after rep after rep, and I've got a feeling they'd make a lot of sales before someone finally catches on and shuts them down. But here's the thing. There's literally zero incentive for brands to make it easier to legit check their clothes. I've had a lot of people ask me, why don't more brands use those like QR codes that tell you if a piece is real or not? Well, it's because it would incentivize people to buy those clothes used because then they could be sure the piece is real. But if there's no way to tell real versus fake at resale, then the only thing you can do to be 100% sure is to go into that brand store and buy it brand new. And that's exactly what these brands want. Of course, it's more money for them. And it worked because there I was in Miami heading to the Chrome Hearts store. It was blazing hot because of course it was, it's goddamn Miami. I was on the same block as the store and I get out front and there is no door to enter. Just a, a giant closed gate. But I could see the store was open. There were people inside, there were Lambos out front, probably like a Saudi prince client or something. So I look in and I see a security guard there. So I wave him over and I ask like, yo, where's the door? And he says, do you have an appointment? And let me tell you, I have never felt more poor in my life because I had to say, uh, uh, no, I don't. And I just walked away with my tail between my legs. Never in my life have I felt uncomfortable or unable to go into a brand store, but here I was getting turned away. How was I supposed to know you need to make an appointment? Nobody does that. So 
That was attempt one, and I felt like an idiot. Of course, they don't let you make same-day appointments, so I had to go on their site and set one like a couple days out. Luckily, their store is right in the middle of like 500 other luxury stores, so my visit to that neighborhood wasn't totally wasted. Rick Owens was more than happy to let me into his store right down the road. So, the day finally comes and it's time for my appointment. I grab an Uber back down there once again, and this time, I know the drill. I'm like a pro, so I wave security over and tell them I've got an appointment. They unlock their big ornate black gate and then they lock it behind me. That's right, they literally lock you inside the store. And that's not the only psychological trick they pull. It's actually like a crazy experience they have there. I'm not sure how many luxury stores y'all go to, but that is not the norm. If you go to like a, a Balenciaga or Gucci store, yeah, they have like security guards or doormen or whatever you wanna call them, but they don't lock you in or anything. And they also don't have someone follow you around literally the entire time you're in the store, but guess what? Chrome Hearts does. Yeah, when you walk in, you don't get to start browsing. They make you sit in a little waiting room. It almost reminded me of a, a barber or tattoo shop. You're on like a little couch, and in front of you is a book with all this Chrome Hearts photography. I felt like I was supposed to pick out my haircut or something. And after a couple minutes, a woman walked out, and she said she'd be helping me out today. That's right, Chrome Hearts gives you a companion or personal shopper or assistant or whatever you want to call them. They stay with you the entire time you're in this store. And I'm 100% convinced that this is all an effort to get you to spend more money. Because think about it. If you're just walking around all alone, you're like not feeling a lot of pressure, like you have to buy something. But with someone breathing down your neck the whole time, an employee of the, of the store, you don't want to let them down. And they probably make their living on commission, so if you don't buy, you're like kind of stealing their time, right? And that's not to mention being literally locked inside, which again, made me feel like additional pressure to make it worth it or something by, by buying something. So she's walking me around and she takes me to the downstairs area first. That's where they keep their gold jewelry. I am not at all a gold person, so I mostly looked at the sunglasses that they also had down there. And let me tell you, the sunglasses were actually really dope. My Chrome assistant really wanted me to buy them. I, I don't really know why, but I just wasn't in the market for new sunny, so I politely declined. But again, I felt really bad doing so. The psychological pressure was just insane. One other thing they had downstairs were these like puffy work jacket type things, like Carhartt type jackets. They had no leather, no embellishments. They were really just boring as hell. And they were like $4,500, of course. And that's gonna become like a bit of a theme here. It was pretty obvious that I wasn't interested in the stuff on the first floor. So that's when she finally asked me what I was actually looking for. And I said, I I'm really just hoping to find like a silver ring. Now, why is that? Didn't I say I'm not a Chrome Hearts fan? Well, yeah, but that's why I went to the store. I wanted to see if there's more to it that I was missing. And in the time since my last video on the brand, I have carved out a slice of appreciation for them when it comes to jewelry, especially their silver work. A little while back, I picked up this guy right here. It's a silver ring in the shape of a nail that's been curved around. I love this style. It's, it's very rock and roll goth, which they do very well, and ornate at the head of the nail. So I figured since I was able to fall in love with this, maybe I can really turn into a Chrome Hearts fan. So she brings me up to the silver jewelry area. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. They had every iconic Chrome Hearts style you could think of, from the classics to newer ones like the Rolling Stones lips, all that good stuff. And this is where I actually felt like I was in my element. For once, I actually wanted to buy, so the pressure wasn't a factor anymore because no pressure was needed. I will say here, my experience was good in this area. My assistant was happy to let me try on a million different rings in different sizes, and I wasn't getting any impression that she thought I was like too poor to be there or wasn't serious or whatever. I did pick out a ring, but I think I'll save that till the end. So at this point, she took me to one other area to look around, and there, my goal was to really try and discover if there was anything more to the brand that I missed. When I criticize Chrome Hearts, everyone always tells me that I'm like cherry picking, that I'm only pointing out the dumb, cheap stuff, and that they have stuff that's way better that I'm just ignoring. But judging by what I saw there, 
The core brand really is the dumb stuff. My assistant made a big show of pointing out all the t-shirts and hoodies and flap rim hats that were Miami exclusive. She made it very clear that that's the main thing people want when they come to the Miami shop. But they were all just boring as hell, the same hats and t-shirts and hoodies that you've seen on Grailed a trillion and one times. I'm telling you, I wanted to see the jeans with insane intricate patches. I wanted to see the leather jackets with wild silver hardware. I wanted to see the handmade leather shoes with every detail just nailed perfectly, but I didn't. I saw a bunch of embroidered hats that look like what you'd see at the stands in any sporting event. I saw screen printed t-shirts that look like what you'd see on the rack in any tattoo shop waiting room. I saw Miami branded everything that looks like what you'd see in an airport gift shop. Sure, you can go on Instagram and see the crazy stuff they make, the artisan stuff, the intricate stuff, but that is just not the core of the brand. That's not what people are buying. People are buying the trash, and that's just a fact in my experience. Like maybe they have a Chanel situation going on where they have the nutty cool stuff in like a, a back room and they don't let you buy it until you've already proven that you're like a good customer or whatever. If that's the case, sure, I guess I can't fault them. It would be one more effective psychological trick to get people to spend more money. However, I have to admit when I'm being a hypocrite because I do like some of the stuff they do. I actually like it so much that I spent a small fortune in that shop on this ring. Look at that, it's in like a suede bag. It's got that leather smell. Mm. What do we got in here? What do we got? Those are matches. That's not a ring, but they give you matches. That's pretty cool. So this ring I got, it is one of their classics, the Cemetery Cross. As I've come to expect, the silver work is impeccable. The artisanship is on full display. I love this ring. I love a lot of the stuff that Chrome Hearts does with silver and leather, but that's not what they're selling primarily. So pointing to that as the core of the brand just isn't accurate in my opinion. So I told my assistant, look, I'm just gonna stick with the ring. She seemed fairly disappointed that I wasn't gonna spend more, but I just didn't see any value in anything else they had there. So I paid and I asked the security guard out front to unlock the gate and let me out. Yes, I really had to ask them to unlock the gate and let me out. Now, will I ever go back to another Chrome Heart store? Honestly, probably not. They had a great selection of jewelry, but the stuff I liked could also certainly be found at resale for cheaper. And beyond that, it was t-shirts, hoodies, and hats. Again, all for double what I would pay on Grailed or somewhere like that. If you're a Chrome super fan, great. I understand the aesthetic and I know some people really love it, but it's just not for me for the most part. And that store experience was just really damn weird. And the last thing I'll say, if you're kind of into Chrome Hearts but maybe have some of the same issues that I do, subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be putting out a video about a brand that I think does Chrome Hearts better than Chrome Hearts does. Sound interesting? Well, get ready.